guys. Hi guys. Hey, 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 hey. Thanks for coming once again. <laughs> Thank you for supporting my endeavors on Tales by Africa. So this year, 2023, um, I have been trying to grow my numbers on YouTube. <laughs> and I've been posting uh, episodes back to back to back to back. <laughs> But imagine if you're making and posting all those videos and no one was watching. <laughs> so thank you so much. Glory outside. <sighs> so thank you so much guys for always taking the time to tune in and watch our episodes here on Tales by Africa. So um, on Tales by Africa, I, I get to talk about So on Tales by Africa, I get to talk about subject matter that's uh, deeply passionate, that I'm deeply passionate about. Subject matter that's about uh, happy stories about life in Africa, or even outside Africa, but uh, just generally happy stories that you'd not traditionally see in mainstream media. So I mostly post about things that are deep, uh, deeply passionate to me, and uh, for you, you guys who know me in real life, then know that one of the most important things to me is Christ Jesus. So for the longest time I've been having this argument like should I post about Jesus or should I not? Should I post or should I not? Should I post or should I die? You know, uh, why this conflict? Where does the conflict come from? Um, if Jesus really is an important part of my life, then why do I, why do I um, seem to be wondering, asking myself if I should talk about Jesus or not. Um, hi guys, hey, hey, hey. So why the conflict about, um, should I post about Jesus or shouldn't I? See, um, the Bible, <laughs> the Bible should be our guide in everything that we have to do, right? So um, on the topic of uh, should I post or not, the scripture tells us that uh, Jesus, while he was uh, preaching, he uh, said to his followers that it's best for you to pray in private. Go to your room, close the door, and uh, God sees what you do in private. You do what? Respond in public, right? So that's where the conflict has been coming from. Um, let's share the scripture just to make sure that um, I'm really talking about what's in the word of God, right? I made some notes. <laughs> Okay, so private prayer will be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 6. I'm reading from the King James Version. I usually like to use, I usually like, but it's outside. I usually like to use a printed actual Bible, uh, and preferably one that's printed from the 80s or much earlier before society started to corrupt even the word of God. So the version I'm most comfortable with is the New King James Version, which is what we'll be reading from. So about private prayer, let's all turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. Uh, I'll just read for all of us. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. It says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So this was a scripture that was creating uh, the conflict in my mind about if I should talk about Jesus or not. You know? Um, no, you see, the thing is, um, right now, Tales by Africa is a small channel, super, super, super small channel. But <laughs> by the grace of God, it will go and it will be successful. So, wouldn't it be nice if the most important pillar of my life was Christ Jesus, was part of the journey? Definitely. Because the scripture also tells us that what really profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So I believe, well if I totally believe about, I totally believe and subscribe to the thought of a complete wholesome experience in life. 
like be great in uh, be great with your career in the boardroom be great with uh, self-care eating right and doing exercise be great as uh, the roles that God has placed in your life but also be great when it comes to your spirit and your soul as you think about feeding your body don't forget to feed your soul so um, if Toast by Africa becomes super when Toast by Africa by faith becomes super super successful it would be nice that I use the journey, use the, the journey on Toast by Africa to talk about Jesus let's just read about that in the actual word of God just to make sure that I'm speaking about things from the Bible yeah so it uh, this will turn to the book of Mark chapter 8 verse 36 Mark comes after Matthew Mark chapter 8 verse 36 it goes for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul right so once uh, Tales by Africa is super successful it will be an absolute blessing to know that I use this platform to also build and enrich God's kingdom uh, by doing his work I'm enriching his uh, I'm enriching my soul plus you know these days there's like so many false prophets on the internet um, in every major town and city there's like so many of them you know and um, sometimes you look and you ask yourself how can the children of God be so blinded but um, not to be judgmental the judge is God right most of them take advantage of uh, the hunger the people have for Christ the hunger that they have in their spirit and use that for their own personal benefit but as a child of God, you need to know that when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain was taken away. So you can experience Christ firsthand just by yourself. And how do you double check to make sure it's from God? By reading His Holy Word. It's good to it's good to have fellowships with uh, the different churches that you attend. But try to make sure that they stick to the Holy Word. Not personal agenda, not uh, taking advantage of God's children or any of that. And the thing is, um, this is why saying that goes, all that's needed for evil to prevail is for the good to say nothing, do nothing. So if you have a voice on a platform where you can reach out to people, when you see that so much wrong is being done, each time you say nothing, each time you do nothing, you are literally helping them push their agenda. So. Um, if you're able to talk to a few people, if you're able to talk to your fellowship, I would say, go for it. So, um, I usually prefer to read from a traditional Bible, yeah? My favorite is King James. Um, so, today's uh, Bible study is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Found it! <laughs> Uh, okay, are we all there? Okay, I'll read for all of us. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 12. The title here says, Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic. It goes, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was hard that he was in the house. Immediately, Many gathered together so that there was no so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they laid down the bed on which the paralytic was laying, lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, 
Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier? To say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you. Or to say, arise. Take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of God, that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise. Take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, I never saw anything like this. So, um, as a little child, <laughs> our Bible's always had uh, drawings. I really, really loved the drawings, even the coloring books for uh, the Christian coloring books. They always used to have such beautiful drawings. I really, really love them. So in, uh, in those Bibles where there's an illustration, um, they show the actual rooftop where the four guys were removing tiles one by one and lowering the paralytic thing. So what does this scripture tell us? The paralytic. A uh, paralytic person is someone who's uh, paralyzed, meaning that there's nothing that they can do for themselves. What does this story tell us? As we go through life, we are faced with so many trials and tribulations, right? Some you overcome super fast, some really, really weigh you down to the point that you can't even close your eyes to pray, to the point that each time you try to pray, all you have is hot, 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 hot tears, you know? So in that situation, in such situations, we could assume that we are the paralytic, right? Now, the four men that carried the paralytic were probably friends of his, right? And um, they took a step of faith, believing that Jesus would definitely heal their friend if only they could get him to Jesus, right? So even when he couldn't go by himself, they carried him on his sick bed and lowered him to the roof of the house where Jesus was performing miracles. Now, who are the four friends? In my own simple understanding, the four friends are the intercessors for the paralytic. They knew that the paralytic was unable to go up to Jesus and yet they believed if only he would get to Jesus, he would be healed. So what did they do? They carried their friend all the way. When they reached the house, there was no space. You would think um, at this point, the friends would be discouraged and take him back home. But no, they continued in faith. And they said, we have to get our friend to Jesus. So they went to the roof, removed a uh, few tires, and lowered their friend down to Jesus. And just like that, their friend was healed by Christ Jesus. So in life, the times when you go through difficult things and you're totally, totally paralyzed. Who are those people that you can count on to intercede for you? They could be family members, they could be friends, they could be people in the marketplace, they could be people that you don't even know on the internet. <laughs> they could be an old friend that you haven't even spoken to in years, but they literally lift you up to God in prayer. You know, so the main um, takeaway from this story is the power of intercessors. While you are paralyzed and can't even close your eyes to pray, while all you have is hot, hot tears, may God bless us with intercessors that can lift up, that can lift us up to Jesus for healing. Now, uh, this generation, most of the teachers of the law are always talking about destiny helpers. Every time, destiny helper, destiny helper, destiny helper. But guess what? Everybody is blessed to be a destiny helper. These four friends that we see in this story were destiny helpers, right? Instead of the word destiny helpers, I prefer to use the word as intercessors, right? So, um, in life, may God bless us with the people that can lift us up in prayer, even when we are paralyzed. But the thing is, Sometimes you'll be the paralytic, right? But sometimes you will be the intercessor. So may God bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to know when we are the intercessors and to teach us how to pray when we're the intercessors. 
and may God bless us with four May God bless us with the right community of people that can lift us up in prayer, even when we're paralyzed. Yeah, so that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's now a new playlist called Faithful Sabbath. Hopefully by the grace of God, we'll have an episode every Saturday, since Saturday is actually the actual Sabbath, right? So yeah, it will still be part of Tales by Africa, but it will all be on a new playlist called faithful summer thank you so much for your time guys love and blessings bye bye <laughs>